Hello and welcome to ComScience Simplified. In today's video, we look into a tool that can help you create your portfolio website with features like a customizable homepage built with React, an ability to add additional pages, a markdown supported time sorted blog, a topic wise organized site menu, a site wide search powered by Algolia, a dark mode of course, and a lot more right out of the box. Let's get started and look into it. The tool that we are talking about is Docusaurus. It is an open source framework by none other than Facebook, which aims to make documentation easy for everyone. Now let's get one thing straight. This is not a tool specifically designed to be used as a personal portfolio website. But as you will see in a short while, there are many benefits of using it for that purpose as well. Before getting started, let's take a look at the official website for Docusaurus and get a feel of what it looks like and how others in the industry are using it. Here's what the official website looks like. The one that we'll build will also look similar because this is also built with Docusaurus. First things first, you can see that there's a site-wide dark mode support as well as a search box powered by Algolia. There are several menu items that we see, but the most interesting one is Showcase. This is a list of companies using Docusaurus for their documentation. We can see that there are plenty of big names here. There is Ionic, which you might be aware of. There's also React Native. Also, Redux uses this for their documentation. So you see, a lot of big names in the industry are already using this tool. But you might ask, what is the point of using a documentation website as a personal portfolio site? And the answer to that lies in the question itself. As this framework has been created to document code in the first place, it is a perfect tool to create a blog that is going to circle around code. That is because there are so many features we get out of the box. There are of course basic markdown features like headings, images and links, but then there are also the fancy ones like this toggle. We have code block support with syntax highlighting and file name support. Also there are these fancy little admonitions which add a visual flair. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. Let's create a docusaurus site for ourselves and explore some of the important features. We'll use npx create docusaurus command with the latest flag for that. By using this command, it says npx create docusaurus with the latest flag and we are using the classic theme. You can see that it will resolve a few packages and this will take some time. So let's just fast forward. We can see that the installation is now complete and we get some steps. So we do cd website and then yarn start. This will spin up a local dev server on localhost 3000. Let's check it out. So as you can see, we have a local server running at our local host and this looks somewhat similar to the sites that we have already seen. There is a menu bar on top, which has two options, tutorial and blog. And this is the home page. We can see here that the dark mode support is there right out of the box. We can also notice that the website is completely responsive. So if I reduce the size of this browser window, I can see that the UI gets converted into a mobile mode and the menu nicely goes here by the side. And if I expand it back again, it comes back to the desktop version. Let us see the folder structure that we have here. We see that there are mainly uh, three folders that are important. The first one is pages and blog and docs. First, let us check out the src slash pages folder. Herein we'll see index.js react page. We see that the index route of our site, which is the current route that we are at, this is coming from index.js. We can verify that by removing this div from here. It should reflect right away. So we see that it is reflecting. We can make several other changes in this site. So we see that we have hot reload here. Uh, Docusaurus has file and folder structure based routing. I can create a new page info.js. I can paste exactly the same code which is there in this component into info.js, the info page. And I'll save this. I'll come back to index.js page that we had. I'll link this button to the info page that we just now created, which is slash info. Now, if I click on this, I should be redirected to the info page. So as we see that info.js maps to slash info and index.js maps to the 
home route with this in place it is very easy now for us to go into these pages and kind of modify them according to our need so for example if i want to change this easy to use i go into the home page features the top feature and i can say it can be my projects or whatsoever that i like and this is how i can change the home page we can even go browse online and get some nice react based portfolio websites place it inside our pages directory and get a nice looking uh, portfolio uh, home page which is powered by react now let's move on to the blog which is the markdown based blog side of things and see how that can be accomplished when it comes to docusaurus it provides us support for writing two kinds of blogs so one is a tutorial and another one is a blog Let's look at the blog first. The blog feature provides us uh, the ability to create blogs that are timeline based. So as you can see, we see a recent post which is a list of all our blogs that we have posted and this is arranged by time, time at which it was posted. And if we go to tutorials, we see that this is classified by topic. So when we are building our own personal portfolio size, the blog portion we can use to kind of create time series based updates. So if I want to give out a new update to my readers, I can create it under a blog. And if I want to create tutorials, then I can create these kind of sections and place those blogs inside of it. If we can go to the file structure, we'll see that Inside the blog, we'll again see these uh, four blocks. Each of this file is mapping to each of the blog. So if we see welcome, it is simply add markdown files to the blog, etc, etc. And we see that the same content is there here. If I save this, it should get reflected here. You might notice the top section here in every blog post. This is kind of the metadata. We see that uh, the slug, the slug is the URL of the blog post. So if I go to the browser window i'll see that first hyphen blog hyphen post is the slug the title is the title is the title that is visible at the top of the page which is this and then then there is the author section with the help of which this section is getting populated we see that this metadata is what is getting populated as the top section of this blog Moving on, let's check the third part, which is the tutorial section. How we can use this in our uh, blog is that if I want to blog about TypeScript, so let's say I want to name this as TypeScript, I can do that and place all my TypeScript related blogs inside of this. And let's say tomorrow I want to write something about React in specific. I can name the second section as React and then place my React specific blogs inside this. A great feature of Docusaurus is that the beginner website that comes when we clone a docusaurus website is in itself a tutorial if you follow these steps one after the other you should be good to go with your own uh, markdown site we'll browse through some of the features ourselves so that is easy for you to create one so let me go to the code and that would be here which is markdownfeatures.mdx if I see this, go towards the bottom. These are what Docusaurus calls as admonitions. By placing these dots and then placing the content inside of those, we can create these small snippets which make the blog visually more pleasing. One more thing to note is that as and when we are creating our blog, on the right side, we are getting a pre-populated table of contents. So right now we see that there are five headings in it. Let me add a new heading. I'll name my heading as new heading. A new section got added to this table of content. 